Hello. During our 2020 season here at the Turtle Gallery, we focused attention on the state of our planet. This short film was made on Deer Isle in Maine. It takes us to the site and the studio of Vano Okola, who speaks about his life journey and the creation of his most recent work, Ledges Mill Pond. He and his wife, Marsha, generously invited us to spend time with them on two occasions as we produce this narrative of the adventure they have made together. Vaino Kola was born in Finland and came to the U.S. with his family at the age of 13. He received a Bachelor's in Fine Arts from the Massachusetts College of Art and an MFA from Yale University. After 26 years of teaching art at Wheaton College in Massachusetts, he retired to Deer Isle to pursue painting full-time. Cola's paintings, often monumental in scale, appear almost photorealistic from a distance, but closer inspection reveals deeply textured, almost pointillist brushwork. While his subjects are often drawn from local rocky beaches, snow-covered trees, or volcanic landscapes in Iceland, some of his work leans into the realm of abstraction. While painting is Cola's foremost medium, he is also a talented printmaker and pastel artist. His paintings hang in over 40 museum and corporate collections across the United States and Europe. But currently now, this is what you sit with when we, if we go back and look at the painting. This is, this is what's on, the, on the this, primary, this part. Yeah. I, that was, the, I think, the seven to eight thing that I tried. But this is an enormous uh, part of the painting, and I had trouble making it look interesting, but in such a way that it didn't take over the painting. Yeah. Because I tried these kinds of things. All kinds of like it. And they would just take Mommy. over. Chris uh, worked with us on a project recently, and he had asked at the time that part of the payment be made in work, but we didn't understand what he was hoping for, and we couldn't produce it at the time. But after the fact, but he said, what I want to understand is how Vano sees. As yeah. he had trouble with the painting, when he started the painting, Chris had seen it. So I said, why don't I take pictures as it develops? But it does show what a huge change it went through at times. <laughs> it's up to you, no, not necessary, unless you're going to make last minute adjustments. <laughs> I touch rough thing. Usually I use acrylic, maybe yellow ochre, I think and drew with that, actually. Once that was done, I started putting basic ideas of color over the lar large area of this. And so it's the more dominant color that would be in it, and same with all of this here. These were done uh, simply as black tree trunks, because all these kinds of things were done very late in the painting. The branches. This is uh, the reason all that background is so dark is to is to create contrast, really tremendous contrast between these and the forest, and maybe even it's if you compare it to theater. I, I didn't want all of them to be the leading actor, uh, but the supporting actors and so forth and. If you, I feel that if you make everything equally as important, then nothing is important. Uh, I usually, when I see a place that which really hits me, then I, 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 I'm very inspired and I have an image in my mind what uh, it, I want to do, I want to make that. Well, that, by the time the painting is finished, it has nothing to do with that original image, or oh, very little. I, I'm amazed that I got away with that. as easily with this. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that because, oh, this was agony. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't do it the way I liked it. So I actually went back to uh, using more of it the way it is. But that's what I enjoy doing the most is that it work. it's a marriage between representation and abstraction that I think uh, that I'm very, very aware and I think that the uh, elements and principles of the visual language are 
important to work with. I think I uh, consider them to be uh, equally as important and as the recognizable literal content. But this actually, in many ways, is very literal to what you what as you saw. I was very faithful to the shapes of these because they were already so good. I didn't have to manipulate you know, or change mm -hmm. them. I mean, nature, nature was terrific, but, but lots of times nature, as beautiful as it is, artistically is not right. You have to move things around, take things away, add things from elsewhere. I've done that many times. But some things come back to my mind, like in that winter painting, with that black hole underneath the trees. We, that's what we did as kids. We made uh, huts underneath the uh, fir trees and spruce trees in the wintertime that we crawled in there. Yeah. And I also wanted, to be, wanted it to be a little bit scary. What, what is in there? It's wintertime, so maybe a hibernating bear. I can cock some of these things off and <laughs> So it's how, I think it's how all the, all the visual devices work together and what, what they create. I mean, that uh, is from a very nearby little cove. And I have taken things out of there a lot. Up at the top, you would see the highway if you were there, big, uh, uh, all kinds of stuff like that. And um, I have alternate, alternate songs like this. It's all an invention. It wasn't like that at all. And just so that this goes out, even comes back over there. So it's all more active that way. So that really is a marriage between uh, uh, realism and abstraction. It's so involved all the things that are important the color and the shapes. <coughs> textures and uh, I, I'm keeping that. That's one of my favorite things. So I yeah. started drawing at about three years old. And my mother would get nice, uh, nice drawing paper from the uh, butcher. Uh, when did uh, you pick up your first brush? Oh, uh, I didn't paint till very late. Uh, I think I was 14 years old when we came to this country. I, uh, I joined the boys' club with uh, uh, the art teacher there, who was a high school art teacher. So, uh, this, these classes were at night, and uh, so I, I joined that class. And he didn't know anything about me. I, I couldn't speak English very well at all, and uh, so he gave me a piece of paper and. I can't remember that. He took something out of a light magazine and he said, draw that. So I did. And uh, he was impressed. So then he came in, uh, started me on paints. It took a while to learn. You know. And it's, uh, it's, I think, my favorite medium since then. This is, this is the closest to Finland I have found in America. And that's what's so, I think, so important. That the, the flora is very similar to spruce, the birch trees, and a lot of other trees there. I'm very happy here uh, for that reason alone. Yeah, so I feel like I have come home. Vino's mother inspired his deep looking at nature and his willingness to let nature lead him into the landscape. Her talent as a gifted musician was never fully developed as she chose to become mother to a large family. She recognized and encouraged Veno in his visual skills at a very early age. She died of cancer when he was 14, yet her deep presence seems to hover in the work. Cola's stunning, intense clarity and reverence in this quiet place may offer a feeling of core balance. Thank you for looking.